So let's just jump right into it, and I'll bring up Steve Bull. He'll be showing off Game Park. Hi, I'm Steve Bull. I'm the uh, game designer, coder, CTO, CFO, and chief bottle washer at Cutlass Inc. Um, our, we've been around since uh, 2000 in New York City. We're a locative entertainment provider. Uh, we do first-person performance games. Um, these are think-and-run kinds of games where your uh, cell phone delivers the clue and the game takes place in the space around where you are. So uh, this game park uh, game that I'm about to show you um, is now a finalist in the Navtech LBS Challenge, which is going to be held in uh, Las Vegas uh, with the final judging on April 2nd. And um, so let's get right into it. So in Game Park, you are both predator and prey. And you try to take everyone else out before they get you. So Game Park is a variation on tag. To begin with Game Park, uh, one of the mantras of uh, Cutlass is to try to create a single click user experience. So in Game Park, you immediately fa you get a login screen, pres presuming that you really immediately want to play. You have other options, of course, if you want to register, um, find out to see a demo, or check the rules. And then you can also check out the maps. Because Game Park is a locative game, one of the features of Game Park is, is that it takes place in a location. And so important to that point is that the location has boundaries. So the Game Park maps are either preloaded, which means that um, Game Park has already identified some locations that it, pre it presumes are ideal for, for playing the game. So in this case, because this is a GPS game and uh, designed for the more modern cell phones, um, clear sky conditions uh, affect the quality of play. Um, so the best places for play are pre-rendered and is context sensitive. And that means that um, you'll be delivered the maps that are closest to you when you uh, want to play, when you want to turn on the device, those parts. But if you would want to create your own map, your own game park, it has a feature where it will uh, dynamically create a map that you can immediately play in. So here is a game park map of the Boston area. And in this game park map, you see uh, a one mile square play area. And this is adjustable, but the default is one mile. And it allows for players that are running on skates, uh, bikes, or perhaps taking a taxi to get from place to place. At the game, at the start of the game, uh, when the game, at the start of the game, the computer randomly assigns the number of players, and, and this, in this case, we'll assume that there are five players. Um, it can handle up to a couple of hundred. Um, the computer randomly assigns the predator and prey. So the green dot represents the prey, I mean, represents the predator, and the red dot, the prey. And you don't know who is uh, predating, is that a word? Predating on you. So you see the focus of your quest, which is clearly indicated on the map as the red dot. This could be a friend, or it could also be a stranger. So the game um, <coughs> brings up uh, the kind of social networking issues of when you play in a, in a public space with other people, um, can you trust these people because you're going to be facing them um, in the street? in a kind of a predator-prey game park, lion, eat, or be at kind of play. So you can see that maps play a very important part in this game. And, and uh, so we're zooming in. The, uh, the, the, the principal uh, uh, predator, in this case, um, has now moved closer to the prey. The prey is obviously a predator and moving for somebody else. They've chosen uh, not to walk across the railroad tracks. 
Uh, but every time you log in to see where the prey is, to see the latest location, you're also delivering your position to the predator who's looking for you. In the game, you, it's designed so you can send SMS taunts to each other in the course of the play. And here we see what happens when you get a, a, a predator and prey contact. So this game is much like the uh, game of Shadow Tag. I don't know how many are familiar with Shadow Tag, but in Shadow Tag, you tag the person's shadow. You don't actually have to touch the person. And apparently that's important in the modern world that we don't touch each other. So, <laughs> so we're gonna touch the RF uh, shadow of the other player. And in order to get the kind of resolution that we need for this game, working within the current state of the art of GPS, um, 30 feet was determined to be that, uh, that resolution. 